Hello. Hey, Dad. How's that white Christmas looking? You promised, remember? <laughs> Meredith! Of course, it's coming down as we speak. Wait till you see it. Great. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Uh, my plane lands Tuesday at 5.30. Perfect. How will you get here? Will someone pick you up? Obviously. I've got the best chauffeur around. His name starts with a T and ends with Amos Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I hear he's the best in the business. I'll make sure he's there. 5.30 sharp. Oh, thanks, Dad. See you soon. Two more nights, Em. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. Same here. Say hi to Mom for me. Bye, Dad. Bye, Em. Have a safe trip. Good morning, Thomas. I bet you woke up feeling like a million dollars after winning that monster pot last night. Morning, Frank. It felt like $96.40, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I had a great night's sleep. <laughs> I bet. It looks like you've hit the jackpot again today. There's hardly any Christmas mail rush because of the snow. Oh, that's a pity. I really don't mind being outside in the snow. Well, I do. Snow's for looking at, not for walking through. Take it easy out there today. Hey, Beth. How are you on this fine day? Thomas, hi. Well, business as usual. No, I'm just joking. The situation is not that dire. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, sales can't be bad with the holidays around the corner, right? Times have been better, I suppose, but you're right. I'm not complaining. Besides Mildred, there's been an odd customer or two today, and would you believe... One of them was even looking for a full set of encyclopedias. <sighs> Who even reads those? That's like 30 books. I know, they're wonderful. I even owned three sets at one point. But then I'll be the first to admit that a set of encyclopedias is nothing less than a veritable treasure trove of information at one's fingertips. By the way... Did you know that the world's largest encyclopedia was created in 15th century China and comprised about 11,000 books? Isn't that fascinating? Imagine having to load that into your car. <laughs> I don't think my trusty old van could take that. Or my bookcase, for that matter. Well, they do say a good book is easy to pick up, but hard to put down. Get it? <laughs> How's Emily coming along with Christmas dinner, by the way? I can imagine she's pretty excited about Meredith coming over. So let me know if she needs any more cookbooks. I've got this beauty from Good Housekeeping that's all the rage right now. I'll be sure to ask her. But you know how Emily gets in the kitchen. There'll be so much food, we'll be eating stuffing all week. I suppose you're right. But don't you worry, I'll leave the cookbook. I have a feeling St. Nicholas has other things in store for you this year. <laughs> Looking forward to it already. As well you should. And what does St. Nick have in store for you this year? Doing anything special? 
I'm flying out to Georgia tomorrow to spend Christmas with my Daniel and his wife for a few days. We're planning a Hawaii Five-O marathon. It's my guilty pleasure, and luckily it's theirs too. Ah, Dano. Give him my best when you see him. And his wife, of course. I shall. Right. I better get back to it and get ready for the New Year's sale. I've been in a perpetual fight with my pricing gun lately, so I need all the time I can get. And good things come to those who wait. I'll bring over your presents later in the week. I hope you have a Merry Christmas Eve tomorrow, and give my love to Emily and Meredith. Will do. And season's greetings to you two. Hello, Angie. Long time no see. Uh, one package for you today. Thanks, Thomas. How's Emily? Uh, she's very busy. The motel's chronically understaffed. Ah, yes. This must be busy season at the motel. I do like it when out-of-towners come to visit our little hamlet, especially when they like movies. <laughs> Apparently most of the rooms have been fitted with VCRs now. Should be good for business. So, what do we have here? Oh, right. Oh, sounds like you got a hefty tax bill. <laughs> Only, those usually come in envelopes. It's just some things from LA. <sighs> Toiletries, stuff like that. I, um, recently ended my relationship. Oh, Angie, I'm so sorry. It's fine. It was my decision, and it was the right decision. The long distance thing just wasn't working out. Still, seeing your spare toothbrush, that shampoo bottle, a stick of deodorant, it just makes it so definite, you know? Like, the LA chapter of my life is now finally completely closed. Well, I'll leave you alone with your thoughts. And your spare toothbrush. Merry Christmas, Angie. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Thomas. My toothbrush and I bid you adieu. Oh, hello. 
Fancy handwriting on this one. school after learning about walnuts another satisfied customer unless it's bills Christmas gift? Uh, here's hoping. Hi, Ben. Got a pretty hefty package here for you. Ah, uh, thanks, Thomas. I've been waiting for that one. Hi, Mr. W. Please, please, please tell me the mail truck needs a tune-up. Hey, Lori. Uh, nope. I'm sorry to say the truck's running like a song. Uh, or actually, I'm very happy about that. But it's bad news for you. As you can see, Lori's taken a head start on working at the garage. Part time. And only when she's finished her homework. Ah. Are you sure there's nothing I can improve on the old, um, what do you call this thing again? Hmm, come to think of it, maybe there is. The horn's been making this sad little sound lately. It could use a little more oomph. The horn, eh? I'm on it! That was easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Mr. W. Diaphragm had gotten a little dusty, but it's all better now. The mail truck is honking like a big old goose again. Thanks, Lori. 
Come to think of it, I will be calling your truck the Goose from here on out. Big, white, wobbly, and with a honking great horn. Honk, honk! The Goose has a nice ring to it. Or a nice honk, anyway. Well, gotta be getting back to my rounds. Happy holidays, you guys. Thanks, Thomas. You too. Hi there, Mr. Mailman. Got anything for me today? Hello, ma'am. Just one parcel. Thank you, sir. It's true what they say about mail carriers and snow. You bet. Nothing can keep me from the swift completion of my appointed round. <sighs> that too, of course. But I meant that the snow makes them look even more handsome in their uniform. <laughs> Why, thank you, ma'am. That's a nice way to start the week. Oh, I better get this, honey. I'll see you tonight. Oregon Trail Motel. How may I help you?
Hello? Hey, Dad. <laughs> Meredith! Meredith! What's up? No bad news, I hope. Um... Meredith? Dad, I'm so sorry, but I won't be able to make it tomorrow. What's wrong? What happened? Are you okay? I'm fine, Dad. Don't worry. But I'm just... I'm snowed under with work. It's added 86. It needs to be up and running at the start of the new year. I stumbled upon some errors today, and now we need to fix them this week. This sucks. <sighs> That's such a bummer, Em. But uh, I, I understand. Thanks, Dad. I'll make it up to you, I promise. We have all worked so hard this year. Can't squander it all in the last week, right? You're right, Meredith. Christmas is just a few days. Your career lasts a lifetime. Have you told your mom yet? Yeah, I just called her at the motel. Oh, someone's calling. It must be your mom. Okay, well, that's my cue. Gotta get back to it. I'll call again soon, Dad. Love you. Hey, Em. Is that you? <sighs> if by Em um, you mean Emily, then yes. If you mean Em um, for Meredith, then no. <laughs> I just got off the phone with my other Em, so I was pretty sure it was you. <laughs> oh, Thomas. Don't joke around as if nothing's wrong. What else can we do? It's just Christmas. Well, just deal with it, like we always do. Why don't we invite someone else? Unless you're happy with just Mildred coming over. That's a good idea. I'll think about it and maybe invite someone tomorrow. Okay, honey. As long as you don't invite Jack, you know, his jokes may even scare off the turkey. In any case, I'll call Beth and ask her again, too. And then I have to do a towel run, refill the vending machine, and vacuum the reception area. So it'll be a while before I'm done. I'll see you tonight, honey. Okay, Em. Drive home safe. Find a new partner. Oh, come on, Chief. You know I don't need nobody's help. He's from Germany. Hamburg, to be exact. A German? Oh, for Christ's sakes. Stop complaining, Fries, and go pick up that hamburger from the airport. That should be the last batch of Christmas pudding ingredients. Mm, sounds good. Is it for you or for the store? For the store, of course. I'm not gonna change my cooking schedule just because of Christmas. But isn't that the best part of Christmas? I'd rather save myself the time and effort. So you don't change your cooking schedule at all? Not now, not ever. Monday's mac and cheese, chili on Tuesday, meatloaf Wednesday, cheeseburger Thursday, fish Fridays, Saturday steak and mash, and it's corn on the cob Sundays. Ah, I see. And you've had this schedule for a while now? A little over 20 years. 
mercy's sake. Twenty years of chili on Tuesday. They're a healthy addition to any diet. If only they were as tasty as they are healthy. I'll be on my way now. Okay, let's get this to its destination. And yet another satisfied customer. Parcel. Wow, a visit from the Poker King. I humbly thank you for the honor. 
The Poker King hath brought a parcel for the Jack of All Trades. Who boy, Frank came through once again. A uh, package from Frank, huh? I don't want to know what's in it. A nice attempt at reverse psychology, but I'm not gonna tell you. But what I will tell you, I'm kicking off the new gear with a bang. <laughs> I better put this somewhere dry. And then it's back to reading Doyle Brunson's super system. You're in trouble this Sunday, sir. <laughs> I'm glad I can blame the cold for my suddenly shaking hands. <laughs> nice spin, sir. Nice spin indeed. Anyway, later, Thomas, and take care on those icy roads. a Christmas tree. What am I to do? Well, I told the baby I didn't think this would matter. Besides those damn trees, they're a real fire hazard. And I'll have you know the doctor just diagnosed me. A little something called Fancy handwriting on this one. A 
another satisfied customer. Unless it's bills. Good day, Kay. Hi, Thomas. I've got a parcel for you. Ah, thanks. I'm sure Mo, uh, Santa will be happy this arrived just in time. <laughs> Anything I can do to help the old man out. Uh, how are things with the family? Good. Good. Really looking forward to the holidays. I've been making Grace this great big space station out of ply. It's coming together really nicely. And Barry is getting Max a second-hand guitar as we speak. Oh, that sounds great. I'm sure they can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> Neither can I. Uh, what about you and Emily? Got anything special planned for the coming days? Well, sadly, Meredith can't make it this year. Ah, uh, right. Well, we'll still have fun, though. I'm sure. Well, I'd best get on. I have to check on the oven. Or Santa will have to eat charcoal when he stops by tonight. <laughs> All right. Best get back to it myself. Give our love to Barry and the kids. And Santa, if you happen to see him. Will do. You and Emily have a great Christmas, too, okay? Christmas break, here I come. Hey, Thomas, do you think it'll ever stop snowing? I'm glad it's the last day before Christmas break. Well, sorry, Frank. They're forecasting snow until at least the new year. But hey, about Christmas. Meredith bailed on us, which leaves us with a bit more food than we can handle. Maybe you'd like to volunteer and help us eat it uh, tomorrow evening. Christmas dinner at the Weiss residence. That sounds great, Thomas, but I'm afraid I'm all tied up. The Knicks are playing the Celtics. I think the Celtics will go all the way this year, but I wouldn't count out an upset at the Garden. I'm not going to give you betting advice, Frank. I'm going to have to sleep on it, but you know I can't pass up a juicy bet. Hey, Thomas, before you go home, I need a favor. 
can you help me with that guy over there? He said he's looking for a job, but I really gotta run now. Try to find out what he's made of, okay? Good luck. Hello, young man. I heard you were looking for a job. My name's Thomas Weiss, and I've been working for the Postal Service for nearly 40 years. Hi, I'm Matt Kearney. I'm glad someone finally showed up. Nice to meet you, Matt. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm basically a computer expert, kind of in between jobs right now. I've been programming since I was 11 years old. I'm looking to start my own software company. But I assume you are aware that we don't have computers here. Yes, and that's where I come in. I can overhaul this old-fashioned operation and have it running twice as efficiently with the help of computers. But I guess there aren't any computers yet that deliver mail to someone's front door. Oh, it's only the beginning. In the future, people won't write letters anymore, and parcels will be delivered by battery-powered mini-helicopters. Uh, right. Okay. But let's focus a bit more on the here and now. Uh, would you mind working overtime every now and then? During the busy Christmas period, for instance. I don't think I'll ever have to work overtime. The way I organize everything, overtime simply won't be necessary. That sounds great, but what if overtime is needed for reasons that are beyond your control? Oh, well, oh, okay, yeah, sure. I'll go the extra mile, take one for the team, and all that. Could we wrap this up now, please? I don't think a working here requires an extensive interview process. I'd like to ask one more question, actually. Can you please get up and leave as fast as possible? Okay. Bye.